pre-market after disclosing that data security incident that took place Wednesday night. In a blog post, the trading platform said, quote, the unauthorized party obtained a list of email addresses for about 5 million people. 2021, a year that made 2020 feel like a mere prequel, with hacks more apocalyptic, more insane, and even more downright terrifying than we believe. The FBI investigating after a hacker broke into the computer system in a water treatment facility in Florida. New ransomware attack, this time on the U.S. Rival beef supply. Moving to take out a weekend. What are you no, no, I'm just about. saying that there was a town. I don't want to reveal the name of the town, but they got my number. As fireworks send us off into an uncertain future, we take a look back to remember what we've managed to survive. Twenty twenty one begins on a somber note. In the aftermath of the Solar Winds disclosure, the true damage has only just begun to arise. It turns out more U.S. agencies were targeted by the suspected Russian hack. The Department of Homeland Security was hit, and the New York Times says so were parts of the Defense Department. Meanwhile, the Washington Post says that the State Department and the National Institutes of Health also were hacked. Federal agencies have been told to disconnect their solar wind software that was manipulated to break into the networks. The solar winds breach was particularly interesting. You see, it's what we call a supply chain attack. Alleged, most definite, Russian actors went after not their original target, but a third party, solar winds, in order to gain access to their multiple victims. Successfully, I might add. But that was only the very beginning of information security problems that January exposed us to. Threat wire. Microsoft is having one of those weeks. You know the ones where you just walk into work and the office is completely on fire, figuratively. Several zero days in Microsoft Exchange are being actively exploited in the wild against government agencies and other sensitive targets. Actually, Shannon, let's pause on that one real quick. This story gets juicy in March and April and May too. This morning, the FBI and Secret Service cyber units are investigating the hacking of the municipal water supply system in Oldsmar, Florida. We don't know right now whether the breach originated from within the United States or outside the country. The Pinellas County Sheriff says last Friday, a hacker gained remote access to the computer system inside the city's water treatment plant. I have to be honest, of all the hacks we've talked about so far, this one scares me the most. It's juvenile. It's extremely juvenile. In fact, I've been asked about it multiple times over the course of the year. And my stance, and this is completely a guess, my stance is I think a kid did it. Did you know that the attackers got in to this water treatment plant and poisoned the water using TeamViewer? Normally, if I hear team viewer from a cybersecurity context, I'm talking about spammers. Not anything legitimate whatsoever. Of all the hacks that I've seen this year, and there are some that are far worse, this one terrifies me a little bit. Because if you're treating our water with team viewer, what else? What else? I think that's. So I think there is a uh, certain amount of, or an, or an element of, of risk in putting out kind of a video like this that is so timely and current, and obviously this is still kind of a breaking and emerging thing. Um, this video, I want to showcase some of the 
post-exploitation from some of the Microsoft Exchange, proxy logon, Hafnium, Incident, Skyfall, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I just want to be showcasing the technology and showcase the education piece of, of that and some of the post-exploitation stuff that we're kind of uh, tracking, uh, or at least what we've seen so far. It was discovered that there were a total of four rather scary vulnerabilities in Microsoft Exchange. Specifically, this affected on-premises Exchange servers. These are essentially email servers run by organizations themselves, in their own offices, and on their own physical hardware, but of course running Microsoft's Exchange software. The four vulnerabilities collectively gave attackers the ability to falsely authenticate as a standard user, escalate their privileges to that of an administrator, and then inject malicious code into the server. Oh, March, you fancy bandit, you. This couldn't possibly lead to some serious exploitation. Could it? <laughs> Hold that thought. Oh, my God. America is facing a national energy crisis. On May 7, 2021, one of the largest refined fuel pipelines in the United States, the Colonial Pipeline, experienced a cyber attack that shut down fuel delivery between the Gulf Coast and the East Coast. The pipeline itself spans almost 5,500 miles and carries millions of gallons of fuel per day. It was the target of ransomware, a scheme where attackers seize control of the computer systems using code and then demand money to release the systems back to the company. The FBI blamed the attack on a group called DarkSide. Thank you. Chris Krebs now, former director of cybersecurity and infrastructure at the security agency. Chris, thank you. The reporting is this is on the company, a known flaw with an available patch that the company didn't make. So here we are. How vulnerable are we? Well, I haven't heard that part yet. Uh, as I understand it, the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, but there's no question that every organization out there could probably do at least a little bit better. One of the most uninteresting hacks in all of 2021, but at the same time, it was very obviously the worst or most effective attack in the entire history of our past year. It's another attack on critical infrastructure, this time the food supply. The world's biggest meat producer, JBS, forced to curtail operations after a ransomware attack. At least six plants in the U.S. shut down. Operations also affected in Australia and Canada. JBS says its backup servers were not affected, and it sees no evidence that customer, supplier, or employee data has been compromised. But transactions may be delayed. It comes less than a month after hackers forced the Colonial Pipeline to shut down for more than a week on the East Coast. Gas pumps empty. Colonial paid a $4.4 million ransom to suspected Russian hackers to regain control of its computers. Um, I also want to take out of the tech space for just a minute, right? Um, you know, I, I grew up dirt poor, right? Uh, particularly, you know, going, coming into my teenage years, uh, some of you are probably old enough to remember government cheese and government peanut butter. Um, and that was a staple at, uh, that was a staple at my place, uh, the peanut butter often without the bread. And that, that's not a joke, right? Um, and so, you know, when, when people start missing shifts because, and I think like the JBS ransomware, right? They're shutting down shifts at meatpacking plants. These are a lot of folks who are, you know, paycheck to paycheck and that resonates with me. Um, and so, you know, Matt brought up earlier, you know, when, when you're talking about sending 150 employees or 250 employees home and maybe not coming back, right? Or shutting down shifts where, you know, those social safety nets don't kick in, right? You know, unemployment's not kicking in if you miss two or three shifts. That's a big, big deal. And so there's a human cost to this. You know, on the other side of it, when we say don't pay, that, that really is impacting a lot of people and it hits me right in the feels because I've been that kid eating peanut butter with this government peanut butter, no less, you know, with a spoon because mom missed a shift, not from ransomware, mind you, right? Because, you know, we're back in floppy disk days if they had computers at all. But, you know, you, yeah, I just want to, you know, highlight the human side of it because once you're, it's, it's very easy from a, you know, when you're not seeing the people um, to, to feel that way. But when you actually are on site working with people who are like, holy crap, I'm going to be out of a job here. Or in some cases, like I may not be able to make my rent or feed my kids. It takes on a whole different look.
not have some degree of protection. States in getting vaccines into their older population. The majority of baby boomers have been vaccinated. Have been vaccinated. Have been vaccinated. 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 June was like a whole new world. The vaccination had come out. We'd taken it. Numbers were down. And conferences were back, baby. I'm in the game. I was on the bench. On the bench. First I was renting. Now I'm collecting rent. Run it up. First it with the beamer, now I want the bands. Spending all the back, like here I go again. Outside says the chirp, not a camera phone. Told you I'ma make, keep the channels on. Why you acting different when the camera's on? Just most recently, I bought a DeLorean. I'm actually really bummed uh, that I couldn't do this presentation in the DeLorean. I was hoping that it would be here by now. I'm actually getting it on Monday. My my 19, it's a 1982 DMC DeLorean manual, 100% the exact same replica of, 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 of what they use for Back to the Future. And I'll be slowly converting it to the, the Back to the Future machine over some time. This tucker's electrical, but I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! This threat is not imminent. It is upon us. Cyber attacks against TV stations, food and fuel suppliers, hospitals, water systems. These hacks have been happening for a long time. Ransomware. Ransomware attacks. After attack a ransomware attack. Ransomware, attack. ransomware cyber attacks. Cyber attacks. Cyber attacks. Cyber attacks. After a minor reprieve in June, July begins with a bang. Multiple new cyber compromises, as well as novel vulnerabilities, such as the dreaded print nightmare. And its saga of vulnerability discovery, identification that it's much worse than we ever thought it was, thinking the patch might work, realizing it's not just about the patch, and the list goes on and on without failure. Possibly one of the worst vulnerabilities of the decade, definitely one of the worst of the year. At least, we thought so at the time. At least 1,500 businesses in 17 countries, including the United States, are still reeling from the effects of a massive ransomware attack. The hack is to believed to be, if not one of the biggest, certainly at the top of the list of biggest ransomware attacks ever, and the hackers targeted a Florida-based software vendor called Kaseya. Hello, Kaseya community. I wanted to address the egregious attack that took place several days ago on July 2nd against our customers. Our evil is back at it again, this time with a ransom demand of $70 million in Bitcoin, of course. According to them, this was a bargain. At first, this seems like just another story about extortion and cybercrime, but two things make this compromise stand out. First, it demonstrates how extreme the whole planet's exposure is to third-party IT administration such as MSPs. Second, well, this story is what you might consider an alternative ending. Today we are announcing that we are bringing to justice an alleged perpetrator of a significant, wide-reaching ransomware attack. On July 2nd, the multinational information software company Kaseya and its customers were attacked by one of the most prolific strains of ransomware, known as Our Evil or Soda No Kibi. Two months after the uh, indictment, on October 8th, Wazinski crossed the border from Ukraine into Poland. There, upon our request, Polish authorities arrested him pursuant to provisional arrest warrant. It's a little too quiet out there. Can we please raise up the volume a little bit out there? This is DEF CON. Y'all acting like there's a pandemic out there or something. Today we've got quite a few interviews where we're just gonna talk about, you know, some, some different red teaming things, talk about how to get into red teaming, and uh, we've got a full schedule today. Hi. I'm Ian. I do container things. Hi, I'm Chad. I do mainframe things. And we're here to tell you a story today about some things we did together. Yo. 
You probably know the hackers who rap in the game. Int 80 Whitey Cracker, massive a name. Now I'm committing to push, start tracking the change, and accept it like a pull request from Master to Main. This year's DEFCON was unlike any other. While it may not have technically been canceled, it was very hybridized, with attendees coming from all over the world and also joining virtually. Greeting, citizen of the free world, we are anonymous. After years of bolstering the worst trash the internet has to offer, this is truly the epic moment we have all been waiting for. Have all of Epic's domain purchase history, domain transfers, and redacted information, DNS changes, email forwards, payment history, account credentials, and data from Epic internal systems and servers. Time to find out who in your family secretly ran an Ivernecton horse fetish site. In TechWatch, fallout continues after a hacking group named Anonymous took responsibility for a massive data breach of Epic, an internet company that registers website domains. The group obtained and then leaked data on Epic's business and customers with a mission to expose prominent far-right users and other controversial platforms. This is a fun one. Epic had a 10-year-old vulnerability that they were made aware of for free by a security researcher. Spoiler alert, they didn't patch it. This led to Operation Epic Fail by Anonymous. It also led to the exposure of a stupendous amount of data, including sensitive data in plain text and unsalted MD5 password hashes. At first, Epic flatly denied that this hack took place, despite 180 gigabytes of publicly leaked data to the contrary. They were forced to admit the truth when Anonymous used a compromised account to post a salty admission onto Epic's own knowledge base site. Yikes. When reached for comment, the Epic CEO only made things worse. Much worse. Check this out. That's the story. Uh, and if anybody wants to help uh, uh, with like uh, pen testing, um, you know, uh, drop us a note. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely uh, work with pen testers. Uh, and we have to awesome. tell you first? No, you, you don't. I mean, you, 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 can, you can pen test us. Um, um, I think that's what, I think that's what people do. The popular game streaming platform Twitch is the latest online victim of a hack attack. Several tech media outlets say the company, which is owned by Amazon, confirmed an anonymous individual posted a 125 gigabyte file containing Twitch's data. The reports say the platform's source code was leaked along with how much top streamers on the service get paid. So far, no user data was leaked. Twitch says it's working on the problem. That's right, tons of data on the video gaming site Twitch was hacked. Although when you see what was actually leaked, I think this could have been way worse. You know, let's all be grateful that we didn't see any of Bowser's dick pics. I'm curious now though, do you think the carpet matches the shell? What makes the Twitch breach quite interesting is that the hackers went after the backend source code for Twitch itself and exposed and leaked all of the platform's primary intellectual property. They were able to do this due to a configuration flaw in their servers. This is intriguing because traditional thought on the matter focuses on vulnerabilities and exploitation. Not the case here. Good luck scanning for that one. And this, folks, is why configuration management, configuration management, configuration management. Disclosing a data security incident in a blog post out just now, the company says this happened last Wednesday. An unauthorized party socially engineered a customer support employee by phone. They say they got access to certain customer support systems. It was limited to mostly emails and full names. Robinhood says the outside party got a list of email addresses for about five million people and then full names. Ah, for- uh, yes, stonks. <laughs> and the magical efficiency of a basic telephone ruse. There's just nothing quite so elegant as hacking someone with the sheer cosmic power of your voice. Just ask Robin Hood. 
And so we come to the end. A season for giving where all hackers, attackers and defenders alike, are gently tucked into a warm, cozy bed and get to take a moment of peace to reflect upon the efforts of the year. It's a time to relax with friends and family without the ever-present worry of ransomware long shifts. Log4j Log4j's one. Log4j calamity went public last week, and what she had to say was a little bit alarming. Take a listen. The Log4j vulnerability is the most serious vulnerability that I have seen in my decades-long yeah. career. Everyone should assume that they are exposed and vulnerable and to uh, check and make sure that they're not vulnerable. Now, this vulnerability became public last week when everyone found out about it, but it actually dates back to 2013 when this flaw was introduced into open source software that was then copied in millions of other places and has now sort of gone viral in a software sense uh, to the point where it affects all these different systems. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, that's it. 2021 was truly the worst year in the history of information security. The real question is, what will this year bring? Will it be better? We're going to see those geopolitical improvements that can change the state of information security in our world today? Or will things continue to degrade and get worse? Only time will tell. Well, everyone, that is absolutely it from me. Thank you all so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to this point in the video. Uh, this is the normal kind of content that I produce, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun to actually be able to do this and put it out. Um, so if you enjoyed it, please do uh, drop a like and a comment or subscribe. Uh, that lets me A, know that maybe I should do more of this kind of stuff, and B, it helps the YouTube algorithm out, and we always like to hack the algorithms, right? I also want to take a moment to thank everyone who was featured in the video. Uh, obviously, I couldn't have done it without you guys and um, absolutely carrying the information security community on your shoulders. Thank you all so much. And I will have, well, I will have done my best to put links to their, uh, their social media and their pages uh, in the description of this video as well, particularly in places where I wasn't able to squeeze it into the actual video itself. And finally, to anyone watching, you're part of the information security community to whether or not you do the work on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll note that most of this was what about things that were in the news, right? Things that were in the news on a day-to-day -day basis over the course of this entire year. This is a burden that we are all carrying and carrying more and more heavily as our world becomes ever more cyber-physical enabled. So for watching, thank you all so much. And as always... Happy New Year. Happy hacking. They say, say, Nick, what you got up in
that bag, yeah. I got her racks, racks in my side.